All right, guys, how's it going? So today's video is going to be a little bit different. We're going to be doing a little deep dive into uh, farm analysis. The Monkeyopolis, to be more specific. But of course, to do that, we have to look at farms first so that we can compare the two. Because here's the thing, I know most people might now already know that Monkeyopolis is insane. It's the best farm in the game. However, there's a trick to squeeze even more out of the Monkeyopolis that apparently a lot of people don't know. And in fact, I didn't know until I saw a couple people do it myself. And I was like... Wait, is this actually the better play to go for? And now, not only am I doing a run here on Elite Balloonaires to uh, test it out myself, I also crunched the numbers, and uh, needless to say, I was pretty shocked at the results I saw. So yes, this is an Elite Balloonaires run from the previous week on Candy Falls. Just a disclaimer that by the time this video comes out, I'm probably on vacation, so that's why I had to play a pretty old week in advance. Also, we're not doing a ranked because I already did a ranked run for that week, and apparently there's a little bug right now where you can't place on more than one leaderboard, like between normal and elite. So I already did an elite co-op run, it's on my second channel if you want to see that. But regardless, I'm still going to play the beginning of this run as close as I can to a ranked run, just to show you what I would normally do in a ranked scenario. Because for ranked mode, you're going to need a lot more defense for each tier, you need to sell forms earlier, and so yeah, let's just jump right into the analysis real quick. So we're going to start with the early game, before we get to the Monkeyopolis. So this should be no surprise to people who watch my boss videos regularly. I start off with spamming 200 farms. Ideally, I get 6 of them up by about round 25. And then at that point, I upgrade all of them to 203. And then after that, I get a flavor trades. And by the time round 40 hits, I should be able to sell all of them to have enough money to afford what I need to defeat a tier 1 of whatever boss. And that's a cue to bring up this simple chart I made. Basically just comparing cost to income for each farm, and then the efficiency. Also on the right hand side is including a discount village. 15% discount to tier 3s and below. I don't do it for bosses though, because early game, it takes too long to get that 002 farm up. So you're better off just paying full price for the income generator upgrade, rather than sending you back 2k before getting that at a discount. But yeah, as you can see here, not including discounts, the 420 farm is the most efficient. But of course you can't get that early game, so we rely on 023 farms. By the way, this is on medium mode with full knowledge, should mention. So 023 farm beats out the rest at 13.64 rounds to make back the cost of the tower. However, I always go 203 early game just to prevent myself from needing to sell the 200 farm to get a new 023 because the extra 16 bucks you make from a 023 is not really worth selling an entire farm for it. So instead look at the 203 farm efficiency, which is a little bit worse at 14.19, but it still beats out the other farms, 000, 100, and 200. Not to mention the sellback. We'll get more into that later, if you want to include scenarios where we sell farms, because that's what I do. Also, to keep this video not too long, I'm not going to include with Trade Empires, Central Market combo. I think if that video does well, I may do a part 2 of this, where I go a little more in-depth about uh, that type of farming. But for now, we're just focusing on this plus all plus. So yeah, let's jump over to what we do after beating the tier 1 boss. So this is what I normally do in Elite anyways, Alp of Tax Zone plus Embrutiment plus uh, P Training Village. That's a nice way to kill the boss in a little bit over a minute without spending too much money. And normally what I did for previous weeks, uh, after this, was I sold my defense to spam 420 farms all the way up to round 60. So no Monkey Opolis yet. Usually, depending on the map and the difficulty it's on, I should get about 4 to 5 uh, fourth tier 420 farms. But what if I told you there's something even more efficient than that, that beats out this 13.04, or 12.54 if you include discounts. So to summarize what the Opolis does, it costs 5k for every farm you have in Radius, so 2 farms, 10k, 4 farms, 20k, etc, etc. And the income the farm makes is $300 for every $2,000 you sacrifice in farms. So if you crunch the efficiency numbers on that, that means it takes 6.67 rounds to pay off that amount, which, well, compared to what you saw in the first chart, sounds pretty insane, doesn't it? Of course it doesn't take into account the 5k per farm, but even with that, let's take a look at the math. The reason why we sacrifice 420s is because you can't sacrifice a tier 5 farm to Anopolis, so 420s are the most expensive. This calculation is assuming no discounts. So let's take a look at sacrificing one 420 farm. Overall cost is 45.6k, and it makes 3600. And so even with just one farm sacrifice, the Monkey Office is pretty efficient at 12.67 to pay off. Pretty good, but still not as efficient as discounting 420 or 023 farms. 
But here's where things start wrapping up pretty quickly. If you just sacrifice one extra 4204 arm, it costs 76,000, and you make 7,500 per round. Total efficiency, 10 rounds to pay off. Pretty much annihilating the efficiency of all the other farms in that chart. So that's exactly what I'm doing here in this run. I'm gonna go for two 420s after selling all my farms, and I'm just gonna sacrifice certain for Anopolis. Normally what I did before was I would wait to get, you know, maybe seven, eight farms, and then go for my one and only Anopolis. However, it turns out it's actually more efficient to just go for a very tiny Anopolis, and then use the extra money you gain from the tiny Monkeyopolis to afford an even bigger Monkeyopolis. So here's the full chart of the Monkey Opus efficiency. At the bottom, I just put the maximum efficiency possible. Basically, for every extra 420 farm you sacrifice, you make back that money you put into it in just 8 rounds. So yeah, let's not forget that on top of this, you also have the Monkey Town upgrade included in the Monkey Opus. So if you put your money-making towers or your balloon-damaging towers in range of the Opus, then you can greed even more, make even more money. So yeah, how insane is it? Well, just take a look at this. So in this run, I got my two farm Opolis on round 48, giving me about 12 rounds to accumulate as much as I can. And just take a look at what I can afford by the time tier 2 comes. This 005 farm has already made us $80,000, which is more than it costs. And on top of that, even after selling it, I still have five 420 farms, and a couple more as well, laying around. Normally, if I was just doing casual 420 farm spam, I would only have two or three left after selling for a mad. But yeah, just take a look about how ridiculous that snowball effect is. And again, none of this is complex math. It's just simple division. It really helps crunch numbers to see exactly how much better monkey offices are. Even small sacrifice farms that I never thought, you know, would have been an option. The only thing that could beat this eight round to pay off efficiency for the monkey is the trade empire plus central market combo. But again, we'll get to that in another episode. So yeah, now that we've slain tier 2 Blunaries, we now just simply go for the big Opolis. Now, Candy Falls is a pretty uh, shitty map to make a big Opolis, so I only got 7 in this one. Granted, I know you can freeze the water to make even more, but I wasn't too bothered with that. However, if you really wanted to milk as much money as you could, I think the play would just be to do the 7 farm Opolis like you did right now. And then for tier 3, when you eventually sell it, uh, you take your time to build... Uh, 10, 12 farm Opolis, including the water. And so that way you'll be making even more cash on even more efficiency. Now there's one more thing I want to touch on in the farm comparison. It is selling efficiency. So because bottom path farms got a buff so that they have increased sellback, sometimes it's worth it to go bottom path farms despite being less efficient in paying back uh, the cost of the tower. If you know you're going to sell the farm ahead of time. So that's what I do again all the time in bosses. If it's getting close to a boss coming in, and I only have a few rounds to farm stuff, I will go bottom path, because, well, if I go top path, I will technically make money, even if I sell it after a bit, but it won't be as much money as if I got a bottom path farm. So here's a little chart I made, just showing the ratio of selling a farm after X rounds have passed. Both with top path farm, bottom path farm, and the monkey opolis. I used the mini two farm opolis for this example. So as you can see, if you only want to keep a farm around for a few rounds, 0-2 far farm beats out 4-2-0 in pretty much every aspect. It takes up to 16 rounds, 13 rounds if you include flavor trades, for the 4-2-0 to have made more money after selling. Oh, also I should mention, the reason why there's a difference between a flavor trades and not putting one, is because there's a monkey knowledge that increases the sellback of farms by 2%. So instead of 75 normally with knowledge, it's 77. And then add flavor trades, puts you up to 87. However, there's a cap in the game where the max sellback is capped at 95. So you can't go to 97 if you already have a flavor trades plus bottom path farm, plus 2% sellback monkey knowledge. It just stops at 95. But either way, you pretty much always want to go bottom path farm if you know you're going to sell it later. However, what I find crazy is that even without the increased sellback, the mini Opolis farm can surpass the bottom path farm in just four rounds, or three with bottom path boat. So not only is this the best money maker, it's also the best money maker if you're, uh, you know, strapped for time, strapped for rounds. So yeah, with this mini monkey opus trick, I was able to get a banana central plus ultra boost, plus a bunch of 420 farms, plus a max trade empire army, plus a few bond path farms as well, before round 80 even hit. Guys, I don't even know if this is legal or not. But either way, I do what I normally do for tier 3. I go for a dark paragon, a quick makeshift dark paragon. 
This thing is by far the quickest way to kill uh, Tier 3 of both Lich and Lunaris. I think I messed up the glitch though. I only got a degree 20 Paragon. Don't know why, because I thought I executed the glitch perfectly. In case you're unaware, this glitch you can get a degree 30 Paragon straight up. Just by upgrading the last tier 5 Dark Monkey you got to the Paragon. But regardless, it doesn't really matter. Because it's not ranked. So now I'm just trying to build Pops from Ninja Paragon. And yeah. We can pretty much stop farming at this point. I'm just going to end up filling the rest of the right side with the 0 4 farms. And that's pretty much all the farming I can do in this map. In fact, this is probably overkill because we have more money that we'll ever need to spend. So skipping forward to Tier 4 here. I don't actually make a Ninja Paragon here because I want to keep the pop so that I get a higher level for uh, the last tier, which is more important than this one. Again, because it's not timed, I'm allowed to do that. However, if this was a ranked scenario, I would sacrifice the Paragon. Right now, it's just the base uh, Boomerang Paragon and Degree 30 Dark Monkey got it right this time. And so that will kill Elite Blueberries pretty quickly. But again, we could go faster. Especially since I have one and a half million dollars on hand. Probably would have used that money for a Vengeful Temple. Ultra boosted, max stacked. Probably worth the goal for that over uh, Paragons. I guess I've just been really used to using Paragons and bosses because Lich has been around for so many weeks. Yeah, and it sucks that those are really the only viable options against uh, against him. But either way, as I said, the farming was done a long time ago. We have enough to afford pretty much everything we want. All our early farming ends up giving us $4 million by the time Tier 5 comes in. Granted, I do have to build my uh, the rest of my Paragon still. I end up getting a degree 60 in Ninja Paragon, pretty good, at least for single player. And then for the Dark Monkey and Boomerang, they're pretty weak, but it still does the job. So after selling every farm, mind you, the Monkey Opolis and the Banana Central both made over a million dollars over the course of this run. In the end, I'm left with three very expensive Paragons and 3.69 million left over. Nice. And so all that will make for a chill tier 5 kale. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this analysis slash boss slash whatever you want to call it video. To summarize what I hope you learned here, is that you should go for a small Monkey Opolis first before you go for your bigger Monkey Opolis. And your bigger Opolis before you go for your even bigger Opolis. Again, that's excluding the existence of water and the fact you can go Train Empire plus Bonapath Farm combo. Again, stay tuned for that if I decide to make a part 2 of this. Because let me tell you, you can certainly stack up to Monkey Opolis in some aspects. But that's all I'll say for now. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a good rest of your day.